a good evening. Today is a Thursday. Well, for, for, for today's show, it's a beautiful Thursday evening. You know, you know that on Thursdays we do hard talk. So for today's show, we are discussing Winnie Mandela. We are, we are, we are going to, uh, you know, try to understand, you know, the woman that she is, what she represented, the nuances, you know, her contribution to Pan-Africanism, what she believed in. You know, I, I always say that Winnie Mandela was sugar and, and spice. You know, she had her good sides and her not so good sides. But the question is, were those not so good signs necessary at the time, you know, considering the, 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 the situation in South Africa at the time and even during, you know, her, her, her demise? Um, unfortunately, viewers, I, I guess, you know, ha have not been able to, sh to show, you know, these are some of the hazards of, of a live TV program. But we are going to make, you know, good use of the time that we have and we are still going to learn. We are going to teach ourselves today, me and you together. So this is what we will do. I want you to contribute, you know, by WhatsApp messages or text messages, all thoughts that you have on, on Winnie Mandela. Today is a, is a tribute to the woman that she is. So the WhatsApp line is 26 181 I'll take that again. It's 26 181 all the thoughts that you have on Winnie Mandela, if there's any question, if there's anything you want to talk about, just send it to this, the, this WhatsApp line. What do you know about her? Who is she? What, what does she mean for you? Well, at this point, I'd also like to acknowledge my sponsors. Let me start by acknowledging, you know, my tablet provider, um, the very beautiful tablet here from Bridge, you know, lovely. You can, it's very affordable, it's beautiful, it's great. I can testify to that, you know. So contact Bridge. In the course of the program, we'll show the adverts. So you can get their number and call them. I'd also like to acknowledge Rudy K Beauty Bar for my makeup. Now her number is 0249-939-320. So, you know, if you, you are gonna have a wedding or a party or anything, if you want to look as beautiful as I think I'm looking, J just call this number and Rudy K Beauty Bar would sort you out. Also, I'd like to acknowledge my dressmaker. Her name is Martha. The name of her brand is Bomat Designs. She's located at La Paz and her number is 020-294-6149. I'll say that again. It's 020 6149 Contact Martha for, you know, lovely African looks and even cosmopolitan and, and, and continental ones, all of that, she, she's great. So like I said, today we are dedicating our show to the memory of the legend that is Winnie Mandela. Stay with us. The Bridge Kitty Tab is your best gadget option for the kids. It is a real tablet with a lot of educational and entertaining apps. It is very strong and durable. Bridge Kitty Tab, the best learning companion for every child. When him sell a car home by Mbow on Sem. Sell a packet SC Epotadia. When I'm quiet, so not a comfort at your car. And now I say, Obi Pesce, if a baby will care, I bear when he in now, and you will need how cry. Bridge vehicle security. What I bear from Fidia, I'll beat me there about Kahoba. Seca alarm system. Mobile engine lock. Phone command and notification. 
and in your ekika hunina. You shall bridge vehicle security or abeka. Padama Junction, Anna Fred, 0276-293-405, Anna 030-224-5635. Bridge Vehicle Security, Okahon Bambo, Wonsen. The Bridge Kitty Tab is your best gadget option for the kids. It is a real tablet with a... back from that break viewers we are talking tonight about Winnie Mandela you know who she is and 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 what she stands for 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 us as African women for the entire African continent and even for the apartheid struggle in in South Africa like I intimated earlier so there's just me and you you know just just me and you and so we need to make it as interactive as we can so please if you have any thoughts on on the subject that just just send them to the whatsapp and text message line that 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 I, I i give earlier i like to read a little something here you know about the early life of winnie mandela let's get to know who she was before she became winnie mandela now it says here that she was born in the village of Mbongweni. forgive my pronunciation forgive my pronunciation in what is now the Eastern Cape province in, in, in South Africa. Now, she was the fourth of eight children. Okay, so I, I would break now and take a phone call. Hello, from, hello. Uh, hi, Mami Efua. Yes. Mami Efua, good evening. Good evening, my dear. Well, viewers, Mami Efua is a broadcaster with um, XYZ, the XYZ broad, you know, network. And Mami Efua, like me, is very passionate about women empowerment issues, you know. And so for a topic like this, I think it's only apt that, that we bring her in. Mami Efua, what, what are your thoughts about Winnie Mandela and her passing? Winnie Mandela, Winnie Mandela was a phenomenal woman. She is one woman that should be celebrated the whole of, of the whole of Africa. Winnie Mandela for the fight, that should have been a fight for men. Uh, am I clear? There's a lot of noise on the phone. Absolutely clear. I can hear you. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Winnie Mandela fought like a man. Winnie Mandela in 1963, when Nelson Mandela was in prison, you know, took up the fight and fought for apartheid in South Africa. Winnie Mandela kept the name Nelson Mandela alive. Winnie Mandela fought for her people. Winnie Mandela went through a lot of criticism. Winnie Mandela went through, you know, she sacrificed her children, she sacrificed her family, she sacrificed having a husband, and she fought for the people of Africa. Ma she is a woman that should be celebrated. She was, she was, she was unique. She was different. Unfortunately, towards the end, people lied about her. People tried to disgrace her. People tried to embarrass her. People tried to defame her. But I believe, and it is believed by a lot of people in South Africa, that William Mandela was innocent of a lot of, of, of a lot of the things that she was, you know, accused, accused of. of. Mami, if I, let's stay William on that. Mandela, let's stay on the criticism. Just because she died, was still fighting for South Africa. She stood in their parliament and defended the black people of South Africa. 
if it wasn't for winning Mandela, putting together people, the ANC, and you know, and all the people that fought with her, it wouldn't, you know, apartheid wouldn't have achieved at the time that it was achieved. Mommy, it's for I'd, I'd, I'd like to come in here. It, but winning Mandela fueled it and made it what it is today, you know, intensive. Great. Mami Afua, let, let's stay on the criticisms. I want us to stay on the criticisms. Now, she's accused of so many things. In fact, even during their Truth and Reconciliation Commission, you know, during that time that was set up by the ANC government, she was found to have been politically and, and morally responsible for some atrocities. Now, my question to you is, some may argue that it was necessary at the time, but as a woman, a woman who bears the tag of the mother of the nation, you know, was it very necessary for her to have involved herself in this? Now, you say that some of them might have been exaggerated and some of them were light. But then th there is some truth, you know, underneath all the smoke and all the exaggeration. I'm asking my, my somebody... Sister, my sister, you know, yes. in this world, unfortunately, black people have never been treated well. Black people have never won the war. We have a woman who won, who fought for her people. And there were stories, you know, um, 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 created around her. There were rumors. Some of, you know, this, this, the issue that you mentioned, for instance, the atrocities that um, was blamed on her, most of it was not true. Even at her funeral, we had Julius, was uh, it Julius, my, my Julius, Julius Madel, I, I don't remember his last name too well. Mm. He came and said that most of the atrocity that was blamed on her was not even true. You know, mm. towards the end, family but came why? out to say that most of it was not true. But why, Mamifa? Why do you think people would do that? Oh, you know, because um, the white supremacy would never let you go court free. They would never let you enjoy your struggles they'll never let you enjoy your freedom completely you know so they had people within them who betrayed her and that is what we should be looking at we have people who betrayed her we have people who align themselves with other um, um parties and political parties who were aligned with the white people to betray her and i think that as women we should be careful when we are criticizing like other women Mandela. other women i was just going to ask you do you think perhaps that it's possible it's because she's a woman she went through these you know these criticisms and all these challenges now i ask this you question. know you, you know after, um, I, I, I'm you asking, woman, i think that morally a lot is expected of exactly. you exactly a lot is expected of you and half the time people do not especially the men they, they, they don't want it to look like it's a woman leading the fight all the time. Um, there was a time that she was gaining a lot of popularity. She even wanted to stand for president within the ANC. And that is where she started having a lot of problems. She wasn't allowed. She backed off. And uh, that is when a lot of these things came up. That she made, you know, she, she had people killed. She had people murdered. And even people say that she had um, younger men, you know, yes. sleeping with younger men and all yes. of that. And, yes. and, and most of these were lies. Most of these were lies. Okay, finally, Mami, if, before you leave us, what, what, what does Winnie Mandela mean to you as a young African woman? Forget that you live in Ghana and she lived in South Africa. What, what, the, it, what it, does she mean for you? It is not enough to describe her oh. as the Yasantra of Ghana. She, to me, is the Yasantra of Africa. She is the woman that represented the bold woman. You know, when we say woman, be bold. She is what represented. She stood for every woman, every child, every man in South Africa, and, and for that matter, the rest of Africa, then we should be left alone. We should be able to enjoy economic freedom. We should be able to enjoy independence of black people. We own Africa and we should be able to enjoy our best right. And that is what she fought for. Oh, thank you so much, Mamie Foa.
It's unfortunate you couldn't welcome. you couldn't be with us in the studio, but one day we would meet in in studio. Not a problem. And, and Not have a, problem. a lovely conversation. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Well, well, viewers, that that those were the views of Mami Fua, you know, who happens to be a bro a broadcaster with with TV X Y Z. She's also a, a women's activist, you know, and you heard how very vociferously she spoke about Winnie Mandela and, and what she means to her personally as, as an African woman. Now, at this point, we'd like to take a quick look at, at a video, you know, to, to, to appreciate some of these issues well. So I would get ready to call, to call our next caller. But in the meantime, if you have views and comments, send them, send them in. Let, let's, let's chat to, to the number that I gave you. We are trying to make this as interactive as, as we can. Stay tuned. She was pushed to the limit. She was really pushed to the limit. Okay, now we have to go. And the two of you, have you ever taken a photo, just the two of you in recent times? We no, took no, those photos no, many, many no, times. With the, no, with the, with the, you took with lots of people. Just no, take one. Hey. This side is better. <laughs> Baba, open your eyes, please. It's like a line, just a line like this. Okay. Thank goodness for Krasa. I, I sometimes tweak and say, she's the only woman who can say I slept with two presidents. <laughs> and, and nobody would get upset um, because she's fantastic. She really... was pushed to the limit. She was really pushed to the limit. Okay, now we have to go. And the two of you, have you ever taken a photo, just the two of you in recent times? We no, took no, those photos no, many, many no, times. With the, no, with the, with the, you took with lots of people. Just no, take one. Hey. This side is better. <laughs> Baba, open your eyes, please. It's like a line, just a line like this. Okay. Thank goodness for Krasa. I, I sometimes tweak and say, she's the only woman who can say I slept with two presidents. <laughs> and, and nobody would get upset um, because she's fantastic. She really... She was pushed to the limit. She was really pushed to the limit. Okay. Welcome back, viewers. Now, the video you were just watching was one, you know, in which Desmond Tutu himself, you know, was, was paying tribute to, the, to Winnie Mandela, you know, and also bringing in, you know, Gasha Mandela, you know, and you could see here, you could see the mutual respect between the two women. Forget that both of them were, you know, ex and present wife of Nelson Mandela. Now, the present wife was pushing for Winnie Mandela to have a place by her husband and take a picture with him. She asked the question, you know, when was the last time the two of you took a picture together? Now that tells us something. That tells us about the kind of relationship that existed between, between, you know, between them, you know, as, as, as an ex-couple and even as, as, as two women who were essentially perhaps the most important women in the lives of Nelson Mandela. I mean, towards the end, it, it was beautiful for me to watch, you know, and, and, and I appreciate it when women show respect to each other and appreciate who the other person is regardless whatever differences or circumstances that there might be you know at, at any given time i mean she she's she, she's a present wife but she respects the history you know that existed between the two of them you know being winnie mandela and nelson mandela and perhaps who winnie mandela is Regardless what you think about her, you know you, you cannot take away from, from from that woman. She's phenomenal. Well, we are going to be talking to uh, Mawali Dake. Now he's a Pan Africanist. You know it, it's interesting that as a man, he's a, a very passionate women empowerment ad advocate, and so he he is the next person that we, we would be speaking to. But just before he gets on the line, let's let's continue with a bit of education. Let's go back 
to the early life of, 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 of Winnie Mandela. Now, like I said before, she was the fourth of eight children. She had seven sisters and, and a brother. You know, yeah, her hi. parents. Sorry? Her parents. Hello? Mauli. Hello? Hello? Mami Efua. Hello, my name is Kate. Mami Kate Tutu. Good evening, Mami Kate. Good evening, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. Welcome to the cult. Thank you. It's lovely to have you with us this evening. Now, Mami Efua Tutu is a business consultant. She has lived for over 20 years in, in, in South Africa now. If we are discussing Winnie Mandela, who else? Who else will tell us the real South African situation? Now, Mami who, who, who what does she represent to you, Winnie Mandela, uh, as a woman, uh, Mami Kate? Um, yeah, well, Winnie Mandela represents the heroine that was never celebrated when she was alive. But in her death, I think a lot of the world, not just South Africa, seen her tremendous contribution she made into um, the liberation of her people. As somebody who has lived for so long in South Africa, perhaps you can tell us how the South Africans felt about her, perhaps during during apartheid, and then if you could take us to after, you know, you know, everything had sort of blown over. This is after Nelson Mandela had come out from prison, after the separation and all of that. I just need to understand, you know, how South Africans felt about her. I think it's important to understand the historical basis of how she fit. Sorry, Mommy Kate. Hello, Mommy Kate Tutu. Yes, hello. Yes, we can hear you now. Yeah, I said... It's important to understand the, the historical basis of how she came to become basically the liberator of South Africa. Yes. Um, the Ravonia trial um, ensured that all of the ANC leadership was jailed. Um, the main figurehead being Mandela was jailed for 27 years, but there were other prominent ANC leaders who had been put in prison for over... 20 years and more for some of them. And this meant that there was, basically they were able to wipe out the leadership of the ANC, which was seeking to liberate people. It was left to Winnie Mandela. I remember that after the Ravonia trial, when you watch the documentary, she said that she would have to pick up the mantle um, in the fight against apartheid. Now, now, what do you mean? Hello? Hello, I can hear you, Mami. We can hear you loud and clear. Okay. Please go okay. on, Mami so, Kate, too. So, so, Winnie Mandela, during the time in apartheid, she was the highest body within the ANC in the country. So she was the leader of the ANC for 27 years. The rest of ANC leaders were either in exile or in prison. And she was getting directed from the leadership who had been able to escape to, you know, various places in Africa and Europe during apartheid. And she was the one who was executing the plan. So she was on the ground and she suffered just like the people of South Africa, the black people. Winnie Mandela was in prison for 491 days in solitary confinement and in her book you know she was raped she was tortured she she'd gone through so much at the point when they released her she was urinating blood oh my so this is what she went through during the apartheid era M but you should bear in mind that when it came to the point where you know the world's eyes was on south africa and there was an economic sanctions against them, and there was a state of emergency in South Africa. The apartheid government had no choice but to release the political prisoners who had been in Robben Island for so long. Mandela was released into uh, like a, a, a house in Cape Town within a prison confine. Hello. 
I think we lost we lost Mami K too too there. But you know, br brilliant, brilliant, brilliant insights she's given us. You know, in, into some of the things that Winnie Mandela suffered after Nelson Mandela had been in prison. Now she speaks about her being in solitary confinement. Now forget the number of times. Winnie Mandela was arrested and put in, in jail. Beyond that, she also was put in solitary confinement. Now, this is a woman who married her husband at the age of 22 years. 22 years, mind you. Then the husband is in prison. She has two little girls to take care of. And on top of that, the rest of the leadership of, of, the, of the party were also in prison. She, like Mami Kate explains, is forced to take up the mantle of leadership. Now, this for me brings up the issue of preparation, you know, because you never know when in life situation will just throw circumstances at you that you yes. have to be prepared, you know, for. I think we have Mami Kate back. Hello, Mami Kate. Yes, hello. Yes, Mami Kate, please go on. You were saying. Yes, so Mandela was, Mandela was released in 1985 before his official release in 1990. And Winnie Mandela brokered that release, and people don't even know about that. She sat on the same plane as the head of security of South Africa at that time, on, the, on her way to Cape Town to visit her husband. And she sat next to him, and the first thing she asked him was, he, he said in a very typical South African accent, you, when are you going to release my husband? And the man was astonished because, as you know, white South Africans weren't used to black people speaking to them in that manner. What Winnie Mandela represented to the black people of South Africa was to show them that as a black person, you could stand up to the white man. You could speak up and speak up without fear against apartheid. And that is what they feared the most because she was fearless. She was the one on the ground. You know, they, the ANC had a military wing called them Kunto Wesizwe. She was the one who was organizing the troops on the ground in South Africa, training them, giving them arms. She was in the trenches with them, shooting the, 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 the military, the apartheid military regime, etc. So she, she was more than, I think, even Nyas Antoine. <laughs> in the sense that <laughs> she was able to actually l liberate her people. Whereas, unfortunately for Yan Nassantua, she was, she was captured and, and sent into exile. So this woman posed a huge threat to the apartheid regime, mm -hmm. and they realized that upon negotiating for, you know, freedom for black people, if she remained at the helm, then it would be very difficult for them to negotiate because she was on the ground and she understood the brutality with which white uh, uh, South Africans had, had inflicted on black people. And so her, the negotiations would have been tougher. So they deliberately went out on a campaign to discredit her. And the first one being the issue of Stompy Sepe. Yes, the 14 year the old. 14 year old, the 14 -year -old man, the boy yes. who was murdered. Winnie Mandela had nothing to do with that murder. She was framed. And, it, and there's evidence. The police who was responsible for the investigation upon her death has come out categorically and said that there's no evidence whatsoever to state that Winnie Mandela even knew of the plot to kill Stompy. Stompy had found out that the man responsible for his murder was a police informant. And he was going to tell Winnie about this issue. And the man killed him to silence him. And then subsequently framed Winnie Mandela. Not only that, the ANC themselves saw Winnie Mandela as a threat. Because she was a grassroots person. She was the one who for 27 years had been the pillar of the black communities in South Africa. They looked up to her. They loved her. And, you know, the power play within politics played out, and she became the victim of that as well. And her husband, her very husband, was given an ultimatum. It's either you choose between the presidency or your marriage. You either divorce Winnie or 
you, uh, and, 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 and become president or you stay with her and we'll bring in someone new. And he told to divorce Wendy Mandela to become president. I mean, Mommy Kate, you can't blame him if he, if he believed all the stories that must have been fed to him while he was in prison. He, you. Didn't, believe, he didn't believe all the stories. But they had their own personal issues that actually trickled into the politics. So that he wasn't able to separate his, poli his political feelings to his personal feelings when it came to... Would, would, would those personal feelings have anything to do with the infidelity accusations? Yes, there was an infidelity accusation. And, you know, when they interviewed um, George Bezos, which was one of my, who was one of Mandela's very... Oh, we lost, we lost Mommy Kate there. But we will try to get her back because we were just at the point of, you know, um, the, the spice tip. You know how I say Winnie Mandela is sugar and spice? We just got to her spice, you know, and just at that point, the, the, the phone died on us. But we, we would get Mommy Kate back on, 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 on the line. So let, let's go on here. It says here that her parents, that is Columbus and Gertrude, now her mom, Gertrude, had a white father. Interesting bit of information there. Yes, hello. Hello, hi. Mommy Kate, to welcome back. Yes, yes, back. yes, please go on. We're on the infidelity issue. The, the yes, spice. So, <laughs> George Bezos, you see, the, the letter was um, given to Mandela by a known newspaper or media house that has now, it's been now revealed was out to deliberately destroy Winnie Mandela, and they called them Stratcom. So there were a group of journalists who were on a payroll to discredit Winnie Mandela. And so this letter was given to Mandela from one of these journalists. Mandela took it to George Bezos, and they called Winnie to come and answer to the letter. And the only thing George Bezos said was, when they presented the letter, which had incriminated her of infidelity, to be written by her to Danny Mpofu, Winnie, all Winnie, Winnie's response, she cried, and all she said was, I have been betrayed. But that does not tell us whether or not indeed she was unfaithful. One thing that Danny Mpofu has said is that Winnie Mandela was his mother, and that he cannot sleep with his mother. And that one day the truth will come out and she will be vindicated. So it's hard to tell whether or not these allegations of infidelity were true or not. But I think that it had, not to, uh, uh, it had a huge role to play in how Mandela treated her subsequently. I don't think she deserved treatment for a woman whose husband had been you know, put in jail for life and was given life imprisonment for, for you to keep his name alive. Because it, you should understand, just like in Kuma, whose name was, was banned by the, the government after he was overthrown, they did the same with Mandela's name and the ANC. And so without a, a woman like Winnie Mandela, the name of Nelson Mandela the party that they know as ANC would have died a very lonely death without the world even knowing that these atrocities were going on in this kind in the, in South Africa. Mm. She kept that flame alive and was able to get her husband released through her tenacity, through her strength. And so even if she had been unfaithful after 27 years without her husband in prison, I don't think she deserved the treatment that was meted out to her. She For had that. I mean, if she had been male, right? She, Mommy, can she you, yes, if she had been male, I don't think it, the, the reaction would have been the same or the feeling would have been the same yes. had, she, had she been male. Yeah, yeah. Please yeah, go. If, if the roles were reversed, you know, I'm quite sure we'd be saying something different. Absolutely. But, you know, she's a woman, so yes. <laughs> you, you yes. have those dynamics. Yes, yes. So... Yes. Winnie Mandela is a representation. You know, they call her the conscience of South Africa because she, her story and what she has gone through is a symbol of the pain that South Africans have endured and have been 
And this paint has been brushed over with the notion of the Rainbow Nation without really dealing with the, 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 the deepness of the atrocities that apartheid presented. And she was trying to ensure that the ANC never forgot this pain because it's only through learning about your history and what you've gone through. That is what will guide you in terms of how you govern, in terms of how you take care of your people and the concessions that you need to make to ensure that your people are taken care of. This was all ignored because there was a disconnect between the political prisoners and those in exile and the people at the grassroots. Winnie Mandela represented the grassroots of South Africa, the pain of the grassroots of South Africa, but she also represented their hope because it was her courage, her ability to speak when even the men couldn't speak against the apartheid regime. She stood alone during those times, raising her foot, saying Amandla when people were afraid to respond with the with the with the word away to. She kept at it until her people developed that courage. My, my, my question, Mami, Mami K. Hello, Mami K. We lost, we lost, we lost, we lost Mami K at this point. But, you know, um, yes, yes, yes. Brilliant, again, brilliant information there, you know, from somebody who, who lived in, in South Africa for, for 20 years and perhaps understands the, the South African feeling, you know, about this phenomenal woman that, that we speak about. At this point, I'd like to take a quick break. We'll be right back. and entertaining apps it is very strong and durable bridge kitty tab the best learning companion for every child Welcome back from that viewers you know today like I, I, I intimated we are 
you know, essentially giving our own tributes to, to the phenomenal woman that is Winnie, Winnie Mandela. Let, let's, let, let's go back to educating ourselves again. You know, let, let's talk about her marriage to Nelson Mandela. Now, she met the lawyer and anti-apartheid activist Nelson Mandela in 1957 when he was still married to Evelyn Mace. Now, if you don't know, Mandela had a first wife. Winnie Mandela was his second wife. Now, she was 22 years old and she was standing at a bus stop in Soweto when Mandela first saw her and, and charmed her. Now, he secured a lunch date the, the, the following week. The couple married in 1958. They had two daughters, Zinani and then Zinjiwe. I, I hope I got the name right. Mandela was arrested and jailed in 1963, and he was not released until 1990. That spending 27 years in, in jail. Now, the couple separated in 1992. They finalized their divorce in March 1996 you know um it was through an out of court settlement during the divorce hearing um Man mandela was not too keen on on arbitration saving the marriage he was determined you know to, to end the, the marriage but um I, I want to read a quote here that i find very interesting now subsequently in 1994 when in an interview winnie mandela was asked about the possibility of a comeback she said and i read I am not fighting to be the country's first lady. In fact, I am not the sort of person to carry beautiful flowers and be an ornament to everyone. For me, th those words are so deep, you know, so, so deep. This is a woman who says, I am not fighting to carry flowers and be an ornament to anyone. Oftentimes we talk about women being arm candy, you know, the need for a woman to be beautiful and stand by her man and, and, and be seen, you know, as, as a reflection of the man's success and, and, and all of that. You know, as women, we don't push ourselves, you know, we'd like to stay back and, and, and be the support and be the help and, and all of that. Now, this is one woman who said, in her own words, she said, I am not the sort of person to, to carry flowers those those are deep words you know don't take them literally she, she's not the sort of person to carry flowers and to be an ornament this is one woman who believed by her own words that it was her place you know her calling to stand up to stand up and act act fight you know a terrible terrible thing like apartheid like racism and in her own way contribute meaningfully meaningfully to to the end of apartheid to the african struggle to women empowerment and and to all of that personally winnie mandela is a role model i don't know about you but personally she is i always say she's sugar and spice we are told of all the things that she went through the rape the solitary confinement all of that i mean those do things to you you know it, it does things to who you are it does things to your, to, to your personality and so like kate kate mommy kate tutu said she, she can excuse her, even even if some of the allegations against her are true. You can understand her. This is somebody who went to torture, you know, 20, 22 years. Remember that. She was 22 years when she married her husband. He was in jail for 27 years. She had two little girls to take care of. She was in prison. She was raped. She was tortured. All of that, you know. And yet, through it all, through it all, William Mandela stood strong. For me, in her own right, put Nelson Mandela aside, she was phenomenal as her, as Winnie Mandela. And that's how I want us to remember her and celebrate her. I want history to be kind to, 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 to the essence, the essence of, of Winnie Mandela. This has been our show. I, I hope that at the very least, you learned a little something about, you know, about Mandela. Have a lovely evening. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Mama. Some of those who sold out to the regime are here. And what is funny, Mama, is that they are crying the loudest, more than all of us who cared for you. Mama, Mama, the UDF cabal is here. The cabal that rejected you and disowned you and sent you to the brutal apartheid regime is here. When, when they called, when they called the press conference during the 
the dark days of apartheid, when they called the press conference, when the regime was prepared to kill and said in that press conference, you are not part of them, they are here today. Mama, why did the UDF call a press conference to disassociate themselves from you? Because you were never a member of UDF. You were a member of the ANC. You were the only one who was pronouncing ANC in the 80s. Why did the UDF see the need to disassociate themselves with a person who was not their member? Mama, you never told me how we must treat them when they come here. I'm waiting for a signal, ma. Mama. Nomzam. Mama Nomzamo. All those who resigned from the NEC of the Women's League because they said they cannot be led by a criminal, they are here. Some of them, some of them, some of them are playing prominent roles in your funeral, in a funeral of a person they called a criminal, in a funeral of a person they were ready to humiliate in front of the whole world. They are here, man. Ma, 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 I'm waiting for a signal on how we should treat them. Mama, the same people who shocked us by not allowing you to pay tribute to the late Pita Mukaba at his funeral, despite the fact that you molded his politics in the South African Youth Congress and the ANC Youth League, they are here. They prevented you from addressing Pita Mukaba's funeral, despite the fact that you were the president of the Women's League and the Women's League was on the program. And our cries as the youth activists for you to speak fell on deaf ears. Life is so unfair, Ma, because we see these people amongst us here today. We don't know what to do because we don't want to be accused of being insensitive and disrespecting your dignified funeral. We mentioned some of these few incidences just to make them aware. We mentioned these incidences few incidences just to make them aware that we know what they did to you they must never think we have forgotten what they did to you we see you in your beautiful suits betrayals sellouts we see you